Praise God. Hallelujah. And hallelujah. And the thing that you have to understand about belief is that there is nobody that has ever believed without an action. If you say you are a believer, show me the action. What have you done? Am I communicating? That is where I have to catch you. I'm very, I'm, I was very happy because you were celebrating. It has come for my time to celebrate with you. When it comes to the action verb believe, there is nobody that believes without an action. Praise God. Because anything worth believing is worth fighting for. It's worth standing for. Because there is a power behind it. There is a force behind it. It cannot be empty. It cannot be void. Romans chapter number 10, verse number 9. Let's see something. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart, it means belief has a location. If thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, it means, are you seeing what is happening here? I have accepted someone, Jesus. Are you getting me? Continue. With thy mouth, the Lord Jesus, and thou shalt believe in thy heart that God hath raised him from the dead. Thou shalt be saved. Listen to something. Go back to that statement. Listen to the last phrase of the statement. The Bible says, Thou shalt be saved. Salvation is not biscuit. And I love the way you preach it. Very simple and sweet. But you are not telling the person that there is work behind. Because it's not empty. You need do not miss to drive it. That's why it is power. See, the disciples really tried. Because it was one man that carried the Holy Spirit. Jesus. Are you getting me? For them to believe Jesus, when they themselves did not have the Holy Spirit, it was an uphill task. Praise God. It was an uphill task. Because no matter how I preach to you today, if the Holy Spirit is not involved to give you the power to understand me, I'm wasting my time. Am I communicating? Thou shalt be saved just by believing. Put it again. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shall believe in thy heart that God has raised him from the dead, I believe thou shalt be saved. Is that how easy it is? <laughs> For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness. Stop! Are you seeing? They have given you another statement when they told you before that thou shalt be saved. Are you getting? Yes, See, the way God designed the Bible is very palatable. Palatable means that it's well presented so that you can start eating before you discover that there's bone in the middle. Yes, Paul said it. When you're a baby, the whole food will melt. Uh-huh. As you're taking milk and coming, bone is waiting for you. Are you getting me? The first of all told the guy in Romans 10, 9 that just say it with your mouth. Believe in your heart, that's all. He was happy and happy and happy. Eh? Came to verse 10. For with the heart man believed unto righteousness. They have added another word. And with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. That one is easy. I can say it ten times. Are you getting my point? This other side is just for me to say it. There's no problem. Because people can tell you you are looking good when you are actually looking bad. <laughs> that is the thing with life. Somebody can tell you what is not in his mind. Somebody can tell you what is totally against what is in his heart. Somebody can tell you, I will do it when the person says, I will not do it. Praise God. You people can decide how to meet at 4.30 a.m. and pray and the person says, yes. That yes is a donation of no in sleep. 
Are you getting me? Yes, that is why the confession is not a problem. To me, the mouth is not a problem. It's the believing in the heart. Because no one sees it. Praise God. Hallelujah. And now, if you must live with God and be with him, you must present these qualities of righteousness. That is where the problem is. So the problem is not really confession. It can be made by anybody. The problem now is righteousness. Let's see what happened in the Old Testament. Genesis chapter 15, verse 5. Genesis 15, verse 5. And he brought him forth abroad and said, Look now toward heaven. This is God talking to Abraham. And tell the stars, if thou be able to number them, and he said unto him, so shall thy seed be. Stop, don't go to the next verse. So shall thy seed be. Before God said this to Abraham, there is an action Abraham played before he got to this level. Am I, am I communicating? The action he played and did, the obedience he portrayed, all is summed up in the word believe. He trusted God. I've, I'm supposed to put trust. To have trust in. To be confident in. Am I communicating? Trust and confidence in. Praise God. Go back to verse 5. And he brought him forth abroad and said, Look now toward heaven and tell the stars, if thou be able to number them. And he said unto him, so shall thy seed be. Verse number six. And he believed in the Lord and he was counted unto him for what? Righteousness. Without Romans chapter number 10 verse 9 coming to play. Do you know the span between Genesis and Romans chapter 10 verse 9? is more than 10,000 years. What are you talking Thousands of years. But somebody caught it. There are things you do, but you don't know the name. Are, am I communicating with you? Are you getting me? There are some things you portray, but you don't know that these are qualities that God needs. Praise God. He believed God when there was no other reference. And he believed in the Lord. And God counted it unto him. That he does not want, see, he did not want, God did not want um, Abraham to say, I believe you. He already did it in the heart and God counted it unto him for that. Let me tell you something. This scripture means that there are many people, in fact, the real people that are truly repentant in heart are the people that listen to the word until they become. Not the people that get up and say, I receive Christ. They can do it 10 times and it doesn't happen in their heart. Are you getting me? Are you getting me? I'm telling you. If you check where the people you call for altar call, they have attended altar call in 152 places. That's the 153rd they are going to attend. Am I communicating? Yes, sir. I'm communicating? Am I te- you, 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 I mean you. I'm not talking about you, you. You know how many times you receive Christ until you met the Christ of Apostle Divine your Cup? I'm not saying that homologia is not important, that the confession is not important. I'm telling you at the higher realm of glory that even without confession, somebody can be saved. It's a high, it's a high teaching now. Even without confession, somebody can be Abraham was saved by believing God. God already marked it that is true, that he has already believed. So the power of believing granted him salvation. Am I communicating? The power of believing. And remember, it is believing. It's not believed because there are many people, the day they came to LTM, their zeal was 128%. In fact, 250. Praise God. Instead of it adding, as time was going, it was dropping. It's even good when it's 250, it starts dropping. But don't let it drop below 100%. That's the problem now. 
As time goes, the disease keeps dropping. You discover that it is not believing, it is believed. I love LTM. That's, I love LTM. Just take note. When people start saying that, you start, I, I, love, I love church. I really love church. Oh. I really love church. Just check what the person is going to say next. Because if you love LTM, you don't even need to say it. We'll see it in your action. God punish the devil. Am I complicating? Yes, By believing Abraham. Do you know that truly Abraham was saved? Because even when he died, he did not go to hell. Or he did not go to the other side of hell. He went to his bosom. He believed God and they made him a house with AC in hell. Am I complicating? Why? Because he believed. When you believe a vision, there is power behind a vision to force you ahead. When you believe a vision, when you believe a man, the force that propelled the man to the level will propel you. Are, are you getting me? If your trust and confidence lies in the God of Apostle Divine the very God that made him apostle can make you apostle. Because you believed in him and you believed in his God and God counted it unto you for righteousness. It means that God saw your belief and marked the belief and said, you have been chosen. The power of believing. The power of believing. There is power behind believing. Listen, when you believe in somebody, right, even if they catch the person with cocaine, you tell them that that thing is not cocaine, it's only milk. It cannot just be. Are you getting me? The person tells you that my son, this is cocaine. He said, I know that something has happened. It's not cocaine, send it beside. Are you getting me? Now, many of us have been wanting to receive a testimony. Oh, Lord, give me a testimony. Do you know why many old timers don't receive testimonies? Because their percentage of believing drops over time. Familiarity, they are used to. They don't know that testimonies will happen in this service today. Are you guessing? The letter kill it. They know that testimonies will happen, so they don't prepare themselves. If you have ever been with me, you'll drive my car when I'm coming to church. I'm the one who's going to minister, but I pray as though I'm going to receive, and I receive. So many people don't receive because percentage belief drops. It is better you had that zeal and believed the 200%, even 500 before, because it drops. It drops. It drops because at times you can even detect the next worship song to, be, to come up. Have you ever done it? I did it many times. In my mind, they are worshiping. The next song drops. Then I want to see that. What the next song? I'll smile. <laughs> <laughs> Believers love well. I smile. Then you see, you see, you see bubbles, spiritual bubbles coming up like that. I'm happy. Take up my hand. It has worked. Are you getting me? It is nice, but continue. Praise God. Don't use it now and it becomes familiar, like you know what will happen. See? You go praise it, man go walk That's the first time you brought. Just look at me, go walk Then you don't concentrate on the glory. On Acts 19, verse 1. The power of believing. Acts 19 verse 1. And it came to pass that while Apollos was at Corinth, Paul having passed through the upper coast, came to Ephesus and finding certain disciples. Verse 2. He said unto them, Have ye received the Holy Ghost since ye believed? Ah. Ah. You got, you got it. Have you received since you believed? If you have never believed, you cannot receive. Are you getting me? Yes, See, that's why many people that have doubts. Um, is it things real or not real? They are waiting time. Because they first of all have to overcome their doubts, then start believing, then receiving. Am I communicating? Yes, have you received the Holy Ghost since you believed? It means believing comes before receiving. Right. And this 
said unto him, we have not so much as heard whether there be any Holy Ghost. It means if they had heard, you will not mean them like that. Praise God. Amen. So the Holy Ghost is the power of believing. Because it is that power that brings the receiving. Praise God. I want to rekindle your faith every day that truly you cannot walk by destroying your own mind or your own faith every day in service because you have been there for long. What you have to know is that every service is an opportunity to receive. Because what God has to give is limitless. The glory you saw in the service of last Sunday is God, God was just waking up from sleep. If I thought he sleeps. If he wants to do more, in the very service, he can, he, he can turn the tables and do greatest things that you can imagine. Are you getting me? Yes, sir. Are you getting? Yes, sir. It is, what is your percentage belief? From the time you came to LTMT now, calculate it. I'll give you the formula. Praise God. Amen. And hallelujah. Now, there's another set of people they believe and they fall away. Let's go to Luke 8, verse 12. Luke 8, 12. Luke 8, 12. Those by the wayside are they that hear, then cometh the devil and taketh away the word out of their hearts, lest they should believe and be saved. Are you getting? Verse 13. They on the rock are they which, when they hear, receive the word with joy. And these have no root. For which, which for a while believe, and in that time, a temptation fall away. In the, in, in the time of temptation, they fall away. As temptation comes, they fall away. Praise God. They were just in the new state of belief. They are just believing God for a new and fresh start. When temptation comes, that's all. They give up. The citizen is not going to work. Praise God. Hallelujah. It means at an early stage of belief or the latter stage, it is possible for one to give up by temptation. Believing is the only thing that gives you access to unlimited blessing. Unlimited. Unlimited. There is no limit to what you can have once you believe. Mark eleven twenty three. 23. As long as your believing has never dropped, the glory and the power you manifest in can never drop. For verily I say unto you that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he said shall come to pass. He shall whatsoever, he shall have whatsoever he said. It means there is no limit once you believe to what can happen. 24. 24. Therefore I say unto you, what things soever ye desire when ye pray, Believe that ye receive them as ye shall have them. Remember the formula believe before you receive. Therefore, I say unto you, listening to me today, the transformer, what things soever ye desire when ye pray, believe that ye receive them and ye shall have them. Praise God. I say, ye shall have them. Glory to God. Ye shall have them. Let me show you the form of believing that even unbelievers use and it works because it's a law. It's not only in Christ. I don't, you know, I don't, I don't, I don't see, see, see. It's not only in Christ. Even as an unbeliever, they have power in them to believe and it comes to pass. Just by concentrating their mind and it happens. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. 
formula to calculate percentage belief. Write it down. Formula to calculate percentage belief. Praise God. Is equal to love plus service minus what you have said against the church or your pastor. Minus negative talk. So if you have said nothing, negative talk will be how many? There are few arithmetic Christians here. If you have said nothing against your pastor or your church, the last part will be zero. zero. And if your love plus service is there, that will be what will give you your percentage belief. Amen. Are you here today? Let's finish with this scripture, John 7, 38 to 39. The power of believing. I have taught you today that the power of believing in the Christendom lies in the power of the Holy Ghost. Because Paul asked them, since you believed, have you received anything like the Holy Ghost? He said, we don't even know. We don't even know. It means believing brings the power of the Holy Ghost into play and that's the power of believing because it brings to you what you actually believe in. Amen. Amen. If you focus your mind now on a testimony, if you're sick and you focus your mind that I must be healed today, many people have done that from the houses. They said, today is my last day. As I come to church, whether it is healing service or what, I cannot go back the same. They are focusing their mind in what they believe. Because they have believed until they have spoken. Praise God. John 7, 38. Watch something. The Bible says, He that believed on me, Jesus was talking. As the scripture had said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. Stop. He that believed on me, as the scripture had said, it means there's a proof. Out of his belly. Listen. Jesus is telling you, if you, Jesus, believe on him, it is no more Jesus. That, it is not out of the belly of Jesus. I don't know whether you understand me here. <laughs> Brethren, if you believe on the apostle and his God, you believe on the apostle. You believe on the apostle. You, the person that believes on him, out of your own belly, not his own. Because the connection between you and him is belief. And belief gives you the power for you to produce what you believe. Am I communicating? Yes, it is not the person. It's not Jesus again. Jesus tells you, if you believe me, I just want to be sure you believe me. Do you believe me? You say yes. Okay, you produce. I believe this statement so much. I've been with the apostle many times. He has instructed me to minister many times. And any time I want to say, I'm going to do it in the, under the grace of my father. He says, stop. Don't say it. Do it. Hastings, do it. Why? Because he was telling me that he says, you have believed in me, the apostle. And if you believe in me, you do it. Because when you believe in me, there is power in believing. There is power in believing. That is all. As simple as that. But do you believe? I thought that if I believe in Jesus out of his belly. He says no. Your own belly. Your own. Listen. But Jesus never explained the power. He never explained the power of believing. He just said belief and it will happen. But Jesus How? Is it magic? How will it happen? Go to 39. He said, But this spoke he of the Spirit, which they that believe on him should receive, for the Holy Ghost was not yet given. You don't understand. Because that Jesus was not yet glorified, you don't still understand. 
you don't see understand. I want to I want to teach you now. I want to teach you what Jesus said. They have not explained it. They have not explained it. Go to 39. Mm. Jesus is Lord. Uh, uh, let me uh, can I show you something here? It is written in parentheses because Jesus never said it. Uh, you don't do you understand the Bible? This one is, is not revelation. It's normalities. Jesus never spoke in John 39, uh, John 7, 39. He's the writer that is explaining what is happening. This is what Jesus meant when he said, if you believe in me, you will receive. Out of your belly shall flow. Many people were still waiting for the presence of the Holy Spirit, but Jesus had it. Jesus already brought the Holy Spirit, but they did not know. Let me teach you something. The disciples that were around Jesus for a long time, they did something before time. Because of they were present around Jesus and the Holy Spirit was available in Jesus. You remember when Moses went to the mountain, because he had spent more time with God, he came back, his face was shining. And the children of Israel could not behold his face. He had to cover himself with the, his face with a veil. Am I communicating? The Holy Spirit was not yet present, but this happened. Because the disciples were around Jesus most of the time, when Jesus sent them, they used the name of Jesus to cause miracle when it was not yet time. Because there was an effort from Jesus, they believed in him. So there was a transfer from Jesus into them, but it was not the Holy Spirit. Now, what Jesus is telling them here is not what is going to happen after the Holy Spirit comes. He says, even from that time, Jesus, if you believe on him, out of your body shall flow. Are you getting me? Because you have not yet had the Holy Spirit, but there is a copy of the Holy Spirit present in your midst. Are you getting me? That is, go to John 7, 39. That's why he says that, but he spoke of the Spirit, which they that believe on him should receive, not shall receive. They should receive. They should, it means it was already available. They needed just to believe in him. That is why he asked them, Will you also run away from me? Are, are you getting me? When everybody never understood him, he asked them, They said, Where can we go again? Where can we go? I'm a transformer forever. Where can I go again? Who has this word of life? Like the apostle. Who has this type of gospel? This kind of gospel of grace and peace. Of faith and love. Jesus told them, if you are sharp, you can receive the Holy Spirit before time. Because if you believe in me, Jesus is a transfer. Because there is power in believing. Many times the way you relate to your pastor is the way you receive. If your pastor is a friend, you'll be a friend. If your pastor is a pastor, pastoral issues will be transmitted. And the apostle said, it's not transmitted officially at the casual times. Times you never imagined. Times you never expected. Times you don't believe that that is the hour, that's the moment to receive. Jesus spoke something to them they never understood. That just believe in me, Jesus. Out of your belly shall flow gushers of living water. He was telling them, I am already available. Holy Spirit is already available. It's already available. Just, just take advantage and do it. Just take advantage and start performing miracles. Take advantage because it's available. The glory is available in the atmosphere. The testimonies we are seeing in LTM, there is something available. Take advantage. But do you believe? Celebrate God.